In 2018, Ireland voted by a two-thirds majority to repeal the Eighth Amendment to its constitution, which allowed for legislation liberalising the availability of abortion. And the campaign ahead of the vote was a highly contentious one. We saw confrontations on the street. Look, I don't give a f about respect for We saw posters being ripped down. We saw very heated debate on broadcast and online. Also online we saw a range of uh, disinformation campaigns, of people attempting to launch disinformation campaigns. One of the major stories to emerge during the course of the campaign was transparency in relation to online advertisements and online pages posting about the referendum. In April of this year we saw a Facebook official tell Irish legislators that Ireland would be the second country after Canada in which a feature of Facebook, the View Ads feature, would be rolled out. This will enable Irish users to see all of the ads every advertiser is running on Facebook at the same time. During the course of the campaign, Facebook announced that they would be banning ads from outside of Ireland to do with the referendum. And a day later, Google announced that it would be banning all ads in relation to the referendum for the course of the campaign. After the bans were announced, we found that they hadn't been fully successful, that there were still instances of posts being promoted in relation to the referendum, particularly from outside of Ireland. We also saw a number of instances where fringe platforms like 4chan's Paul Board or Gab were used. In previous elections we've seen these as the locations where a lot of planning and coordinating of misinformation and disinformation campaigns happened. In one instance we saw 4chan strongly linked to an event where fascist posters were handed out to marchers at a pro-repeal march and they were handed out and people used them unwittingly and thereafter there was a controversy about the appearance of the fascist posters. We saw a range of other examples where people attempted to launch disruption campaigns from 4chan. So there was one case where they planned to get students drunk the night before the vote so that they wouldn't be able to vote. These sorts of anonymous campaigns though seem to have had limited impact on the actual discussion and the campaign ahead of the vote. Conversely, the very personal stories did seem to have an impact. For instance, there was a page called In Her Shoes which featured personal stories of women who had had abortions and in the month running up to the vote we saw that time and time again this page was the most engaged with of more than 250 pages which we were monitoring. As it got closer to voting day we saw a number of phenomena online become more significant. So for example the home to vote hashtag which had first appeared in the 2015 same-sex marriage referendum again began to be used online. On the day itself it seemed as if those using the hashtag and those coming home to vote were overwhelmingly in favour of repeal. In the event, Ireland voted by a landslide for a yes vote. And although the results surprised a great many people, in a sense, Ireland is only part of the story. The lessons learned as part of the campaign, online and offline, have massive global implications for how these sorts of campaigns will be run.